How do you do? Welcome to my Moonraker collection. 1979. It was the first Bond I saw at the cinema. Now at the time, my, my father was uh, heavily into space. And uh, for instance, uh, there's a moon rocket in honour in honor of him. Um, and I was following the space shuttle programme as well. So Moonraker naturally drew my attention. But Christmas 1979 was very special for me when I got this, my Moonraker annual. Now this has travelled all around the world with me. It's been to Rio de Janeiro. Uh, it's also been in the presence of Roger Moore. And sadly he wasn't actually signing other books that day. Um, and uh, I did have it signed by Corinne Dufour herself. So I got one of these. Well, not this exact one, because the one I had, the tail fell off. But uh, I managed to get this on eBay, and this is the Corgi, the Corgi Moonraker, and it's fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Some bubblegum, uh, Moonraker bubblegum, which actually still smells, all, all the sort of 40 years later. The little Funko Pops that seem to be very popular at the moment, uh, quite like that one. The poster was actually produced um, as part of the set by Dan Gozi. Cubby Broccoli was not happy with a depiction of Bond that was shown during The Spy Who Loved Me. There was a couple of days that were set aside for Dan to photograph and also to then uh, paint the, uh, the various people that he saw in front of him. So for instance, one of, one of the people was, um, uh, was Roger Moore himself, who was wearing the famous uh, space suit that the American Marines wear, except that his, uh, his patch is Union Jack. Now I'm not seeing in this picture, but in the one on your poster is a little, little patch. This is actually a patch that was borrowed from the, the set of Superman 2. They just added a little bit of uh, red to it. In the, in the poster on, on front of the box, Holly Goodhead is, is bearing her legs. Now, in the film, she's very conservatively dressed. It's nothing like, really like the character. You've also got Jaws. And with Jaws, he was, uh, take, the photograph was taken from him from above. So he looked like he was in space. For the women that are in, in there, the, um, the silhouettes, as they're known as, on the uh, wall sheets. This woman here, Beatrice uh, Libert, uh, is the only one from the, who you can see in the film um, that's on, the, on that box cover. And what they've done is they've taken um, her image from one of the other posters and put it onto, onto the box. Now, um, she's the person that's doing the, the exercises outside the Chateau Le Velocopicon. Now there's someone else that's actually in the film, and it's la this lady here, it's Diane Thierry, part of the second troupe of silhouettes that are slightly seen on the screen where Drax is talking. He's, um, I have a dream speech. What's interesting is the third Silhouette. I've contacted um, some of the some of the silhouettes, and no one seems to know about her. And there's a suggestion that maybe the the artist took liberty um, with the depiction of the Drax girls and actually created characters of his own. So from uh, me and uh, Mr. Drax, I bid you farewell.